-hmm. And I got involved on the role modeling piece because one of the issues and challenges that predominantly young, young black men were having was that they couldn't see anyone who looked like them. So, you know, I had one young man who just come out of prison and had managed to get his life back together say to me that when he was at school, he was told there were three options for him. It was either sport, if it wasn't sport, it was entertainment. If it wasn't that, it was a life of crime and prison. And those were the only options. There were no, and he said that is actually indicative of the vast majority of young black men in this country. And looking at the data, that is the case. If you're born into a socially deprived background, et cetera, those are the only options you see as being possible. They see very powerful images of, of black, um, you know, athletes and, uh, but they don't see the abundance of black lawyers, for example, there are many mm. more black lawyers than there are successful black athletes, but he, he had no concept of that. And likewise with entertainment, you're, you know, far more likely to make it as a black lawyer than you are as a, as a hip hop artist or reggae or whatever it might be. So he said that not seeing those examples meant that he limited his options and it had a direct impact and he ended up in the life of crime, going to prison and he was now out of prison. Um, any thoughts on how to get past the anger for folks who have, who face very challenging issues who are angry but know that it's not yes. gonna serve them? I think there's an appropriate forum within which you can show that anger, you know, close friends, family, et cetera. Uh, you know, if you want to cry or whatever it might be, you know, that there is that outlet and it's important to go through that process because you do need to process the emotion. You know, we're not talking here about denying the fact that you've had something that is a deeply upsetting and offensive that's happened. Um, so recognizing that was an important part for me, that there was an appropriate forum, a safe space, if you like, where I could, I could vent, I could just really just let it out without any fear of judgment and be supported. And then once you feel that you've healed a bit more from the experience, you can then start telling those who aren't so close to you um, what, what it's been like with a view to changing things going forward. So that's the way I'd go about doing it. Start with those within your trusted inner circle first and then expand from there. The wider bias piece is, is a big challenge because we all have our biases. You know, as human beings, we tend to flock towards those who are like us. It, it's, it's a survival instinct that we all have. Yeah. We all process things in that way. I'm far more likely to feel affinity uh, to a mother of uh, you know, a 17 year old son, for example, as I have, because that's my lived experience. And therefore I'm going to flock to someone like that over someone who maybe doesn't have children, has never experienced some of the battles I've had. You know, it's a natural thing. And I will openly admit that I have my own biases just like anyone else. The problem is when you act on those biases, you know, first of all, denying you have them is an issue for a lot of people. A lot of people seem to feel they don't have these biases. We all have them. But when you act on those biases, to the detriment of others, and it gets to the point where it denies equality of opportunity, that's where I have a real issue. And unfortunately, with many recruitment processes and promotions or lack thereof, biases are, are rife throughout the actual process. The process itself doesn't actually present enough safeguards against those inherent biases. And that's the problem. That's a real issue. 